So now in this video, we're going to make a current source. And thanks to these two bipolar junction transistors, the current that goes through the load, even as the load changes, within limits of course, you're only dealing with so much power source voltage, but it will be the voltage that we give to the PNP transistor. I'm going to use a trim pot as a voltage divider. We'll get a fraction of the power supply voltage. And ultimately, that same voltage will be applied across this resistor, setting the current uh, through this whole path. So it will be, if we use a one kilo ohm resistor, one one thousandth of an amp for every volt we give at the input. We will see that uh, coming up. So in any case, probably be easiest to start with this uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor right here. So I'm going to use the uh, 2N. 3904 that you see here. Hopefully you can read that right there. And uh, so it begins with 2N. That's the first two letters. So usually if it begins with 2N, if it's a bipolar junction transistor, I always find that uh, left pin's the emitter. This is flat side still. Middle pin is base. Right pin is the collector. So I'll turn it that way and now it lines up with what we see on there. Emitter, base, collector. Right there. And I'm going to put the base to this tra to this uh, jumper, I should say, which will end up going to another transistor. So the base, the middle pin, is going where that jumper is. And so again, to uh, make the math really easy, we're going to use a one kilo ohm resistor right here and put that to the emitter. So that's an emitter follower, which means whatever voltage we give to the base, actually minus. 0.6 volts of the voltage we give to the base, but this transistor will raise the voltage that we give the uh, signal to. So ultimately, the voltage we give here will be the voltage held across there because we got a couple of emitter followers. So again, we need this emitter follower to give us the voltage coming in plus 0.6 volts. That will give the voltage that we put there plus 0.6 volts there this will drop at 0.6 volts so it will equalize so we come here and this is the 2N3906 right there we'll see if uh, you can read that and uh, there we go you can read that pretty good so again 2N so left pin emitter middle pin base right pin collector and so now this time the emitter is going to be on the top as you see there that's the left pin so we're going to swivel it this way so now we got emitter top, base middle, and collector there. Collector is going to go to the negative rail because this is a PNP transistor. It has the opposite chemistry of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. We put it uh, right there. And so the NPN transistor, as you can see, the emitter is headed to the negative rail through a resistor. And the PNP transistor, the emitter, is headed towards the positive side. That's because they have opposite chemistries. So this one's going to set the current. This one is not going to set the current. It's just going to let enough current through that uh, this transistor can set the voltage over there. So it's going to have the uh, voltage that we set plus 0.6. So now we will do that resistor. So we're not doing the load yet. We will do that last. In fact, we don't even have to wire anything for the load. It's going to hold the current whether there's a load or not. The multimeter will be the load. So I'm going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor that's going to go to the collector, the uh, top pin, which is also where that jumper is right there. And that is going to go to the positive rail right there. And uh, other than our signal, which is going to come from the trim pot there, we're really done. So we're going to take a trim pot. It's plugged to the same rail over there. My power supply is coming there to those jumpers and then they're going to the rail and then I got other jumpers bringing it to the other rail. It's about halfway there. It's going to be about 5 volts. So we will put that to the base where it is set right now. And now we can set it down to about 0 volts. If we go all the way it will be 0 volts. And if we go all the way up it will be 10 volts with the power supply at 10 volts. We have it halfway for about 5 volts. Basic uh, voltage divider stuff. So we will zoom back and I'm going to turn the power supply on. So I have it set to 10.10 .10 volts, but we lose about uh, 0.05 volts. 
so when I measure the rails it'll say about 10.05 and uh, I limited the current to no more than 30 milliamps we'll turn the power on and we got the power on so there's a little current flowing right now throughout the entire circuit the rest of what we're going to do we're going to use the multimeter right here so we'll turn the multimeter on and other than adding our load that's it so I have it set to measure voltage I don't have to move the red probe for this video I only need to move it for high currents so we'll leave black at com black is pretty much always at com and then we got voltage and uh, milliamps microamps of current and everything else we could ever measure so we'll measure the rail right here and we can measure any uh, two points that uh, go to both the negative and the positive rail and the voltage may shift just a speck due to uh, resistance within the wires but that's very little it shouldn't impact it a whole lot so we have 10 volts across the trim pot it's set about halfway and so if I uh, let's zoom in a little bit hopefully that will focus it a little better so if I go to the middle pin that jumper goes to the middle pin right there and then go to ground there you can see we got about 5.166 volts so if I measure the current from there to from that uh, red jumper to the collector up here I expect a little less than 5.2 milliamps and uh, so for each volt that's because that's a 1 kilo ohm 1000 ohm resistor so I'll set the meter to measure uh, milliamps and that is with no load right now so we're going over there and uh, there you can see we have that voltage but it's divided by a thousand ohms of resistance so it is when it comes to current one one thousandth of the voltage that we gave we gave it five volts this is 5.19 milliamps so that's five thousand so it would take a thousand times as much as that to equal the same number as the voltage so that is with no load we're going to give it a little bit of a load with an LED we'll be able to see the LED light up and know that it is passing current and you can see that we got the same current right there the LED is lit up I can also bypass the LED and go right down there so it changes the spec but that's to be expected there's nothing wrong with that we'll add another LED in series right there and now we're kind of getting close to the voltage it's providing so we might see a drop off I'll add another one in series and there you can see we have a drop in current but that's because we're only dealing with 5 volts we got 3 LEDs and so we're dealing with 10 volts total but we're given 5 volts as a signal so with uh, this much voltage drop we're plenty fine going to 15 volts so without the load if it's just going across that resistor I would only want to have about uh, 12 volts so we changed the voltage over here we got 15 so that's probably about uh, what is it 7.5 so we'll set the meter to measure voltage to check that because we changed the voltage at the rail and so first I'll do this one to uh, reduce the chance of short circuit and there you can see 7.7 .7, so a little more than 7.5 volts we'll go to milliamps and so we should have about 7.5 milliamps of current going through 7.7 .7, going through the LEDs so we'll bypass one bypass another one you can see the current is holding steady even as the load changes so I'm bypassing all of the LEDs so that was 7.7 uh, .7 milliamps of current so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a uh, well first we can do this resistor since I grabbed it this is a 2200 ohm resistor so I'm just gonna say 2000 to make the math easy so twice the resistance of this one so it's a little more but uh, basically since we have twice the resistance here now we will have half of the current going through our load and so we are back to uh, measuring uh, milliamps right there so first we had the 1000 now we have the 2200 
So as you can see, that's a little less than half of what we had uh, before, right there. And now, I also have, so this was a little more than twice the resistance we were using with the 1 kilo ohm. This is the 510 ohm. So this is just a little more than half of the resistance we were using before. But we will get, which means we will get twice the current that we had with the 1 kilo ohm. So I expect about uh, 15. In fact, since it's going to be a twice, we set the trim pot to about half of the power supply voltage. And so we should have about 15 approximately 15 milliamps of current we'll see there because you gotta remember it's the voltage we set with the trim pot right there and there we go about 15 even as I bypass these other LEDs and it can be more than LEDs we can put resistance this is a 100 ohm resistor I'll put that to the positive rail and uh, we should have plenty of voltage to still hold uh, steady there and uh, okay with uh, the resistor and the one LED we would have to raise the power supply voltage a little bit more but we could use the 100 ohm resistor and two LEDs and quickly do the uh, transistor directly there because uh, that's only 510 ohms we have 15 volts at the power supply we're kind of getting a little high on our power ratings but hopefully that uh, we proved our uh, point there so I'm going to turn the trim pot down because we only dealt with uh, one voltage which was half of the power supply voltage. So I'm gonna go to a voltage there. Not sure exactly where I set that. And uh, so, okay, looks like about five because we're dealing with 15 at the rail. That's about a third of the way, so that makes sense. And now, so it's a little below five. I expect a little below five milliamps of current. So even with the resistor, now that we're dealing with uh, less, uh, load voltage. I think the power supply voltage will probably make up for that. So make sure we're at milliamp right there. And uh, oh yeah, that's right. This is the 510 ohm resistor. So we'll get about twice the current in milliamps as we have voltage in volts. That's right. So I'll pluck this again. We don't want to do this very long because we're dealing with a lot of voltage for that resistor to handle. And so now we're going to go back to the uh, one kilo ohm which again probably should keep the voltage around 12 volts but doing this really brief probably won't hurt anything and we got current low enough not to uh, be too bad for the uh, LEDs as you can see there and now I would quickly just raise this to probably around two-thirds of the power supply voltage so we're probably at about 10 volts somewhere around there so I'll probably get about 10 milliamps somewhere around there right there and uh, there you can see 6.9 but that's with the resistor and that LED so yeah we're too close to the power supply voltage to go through uh, the resistor and that LED so I'm just gonna pluck that LED but now I think we'll be fine I think we'll have the same current through that resistor nope it went up a little bit more right there so the resistor is throwing it off a little bit even with that LED So 10.8 that's a little closer so yeah when you get closer to the rail you're going to run into some limitations but in any case you can see with the one led and the the uh, led one led and the uh, transistor we were able to uh to get the same current as the led and transistor or just the transistor alone so we had a little too much load for uh, two leds with the voltage set here but at lower voltages uh, we were doing fine so the closer you get to the power supply voltage the more the load is going to hold you back but uh, in any case uh, that's really it for this video I think I did plenty of demonstrations hopefully you enjoyed them uh, thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video